Jordan. Tavares Emmanuel Jordan from Johnsonville, North Carolina. I am a music producer and I'm a musician, man. Well, I got my start playing in the church, actually. I was six years old, turned 20 over the summer, so that's a good 14 years of just playing drums nonstop. Picked up the piano when I was 15, so, you know, it's a little, little bit under five years that I've been trying to get my piano skills up as well. I have to credit my initial beginnings to my grandmother, who is the minister of music at my church back home. She's been doing it a good 40 years strong, man, and, uh, I grew up in my grandmother's house, so pretty much since birth, I've been around music. The gospel is definitely a major influence in who I am as a musician. She put the drumsticks in my hand when I was about about four. And you know, ever since then, man, it's, it's, it's just been a passion ever since. I remember coming up, being little, just watching her practice every day, every night. By the time I hit six years old, they realized that, that I could pretty much <laughs> be a percussionist, so they bought me a set, played all the time, then I just started playing at church the same year. Just growing up in a close-knit community like that, man, it really taught me a lot. It really taught me a lot as far as morals, values, you know what I'm saying? I, I grew up with my grandmother, stayed in her house. I still stay in her house to this day. Whenever I leave school, that's where I'm at. I couldn't really imagine growing up anywhere else because I know I would definitely have a completely different outlook on life. Uh, my, my grandmother, man, like I said, I, I, ha I have to take my hat off to her, man. If it wasn't for her, we probably wouldn't even be doing this right now. I remember being six, seven years old, my grandmother, you know what I'm saying, forcing me to practice on the drums. And at the time, you're not really looking at, this is going to help me in the future. You know, with the future being now and me being able to look back over the past 15 years, I'm glad that music was instilled in me at a, at a young age because that's all I'm about, man. From a very young age, I understood what, what, what music did to people. And uh, from a very young age, I understood that, that, I, that I was blessed because uh, I, I don't know how to play music by reading music. You know, I, I actually came up playing by ear. So from a very young age, my grandma made sure that I understood that I had a God-given talent. And uh, when I was about 11 years old, it was when it really hit me that, you know, I wanted to make music for a living. I started producing music when I was 15, but when I was 11, that was when I got my first hardware. That was the first time I had ever put a drum pattern together using a machine. Uh, long story short, my grandmother, she bought me this $300 beat machine when I was in sixth grade, and on that beat machine, I learned how to put drum patterns together. But it wasn't until I was 15 that I actually started taking advantage of uh, computer software, which is, you know, pretty much the the main way to produce music nowadays. With me, man, I, I, I feel like music runs the world, you know what I'm saying? So anything that's going on in this world somehow, some way, uh, has music attached to it. For instance, man, I can even go back to playing, playing drums at church, uh, praise breaks and stuff, you know, people start shouting. You know, the, the emotion is heavy, man, and that's all because of the music, uh, specifically the, the drum beat, you know what I'm saying? I mean, er everybody know that uh, people with African descent, you know what I'm saying, have <clears throat> a special bond with, with, with the drum. Like I said, man, I always understood that, that, that music was a main, a main attachment to, to emotion, and uh, music can definitely shape how people react to things. It can shape how people carry themselves in everyday life, man, and uh, and I feel grateful to be somebody that can actually create music to, you know what I'm saying, hopefully change someone's life. <laughs> man, uh, my first beats were, 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 were horrible, man. They were, they were, they were trash uh, compared to now. But, you know, at the time, you know, I thought, I thought that I was, I thought I was Manny Fresh, man. I thought I was Kanye or somebody. Creative people in general inspire me from musicians to artists to filmmakers to poets, you know what I'm saying? Any, anything having to do with being creative and being artistic, man, I'm all for it. Uh, but as far as, as far as music, I'm really inspired by American music in general, like Scott Joplin's Ragtime. That inspired me when I was 19 years old, hearing that for the first time. 
then all the way up to stuff like, you know, Jay-Z. I came up listening to hip hop and R&B, of course. So I'm, I'm influenced from everybody, from Jay to Nas to Scarface to T.I. to, you know what I'm saying, just hip hop in general. I've been fortunate enough to meet a couple people that I came up uh, being influenced by. Ninth Wonder has always been like one of the most influential people to me as far as making beats. The music software that, that I use is the same software that he started out using and still uses to this day. Uh, I met him and he, uh, he told me to keep going, you know what I'm saying? He didn't, he didn't have no, no type of harsh criticism for me when I met him and that was definitely motivation for me. I met Buck Wild. He's a, uh, he's a producer from New York. He's a, he's a super OG, triple, triple quadruple OG. He, uh, he used to make records for uh, Big L back in the day. Fat Joe, all those boys back when, you know what I'm saying, New York 90s rap was like really mainstream. I met a producer by the name of uh, Black Jeruz from South Carolina. He's produced for a lot of people in the game. Uh, and all these guys, man, they, they, they pretty much gave me the best feedback possible because everything they said to me, I took in, I applied it and I made sure that it made me a better musician. At the end of the day, you know, like I said, I, I have producers that I look up to, musicians that I look up to, but I would definitely want to be better than them. Well, really, a lot of producers, well, pr producers in general, I feel like each producer has their own techniques of producing records. Uh, for me, <clears throat> it's pretty simple. Uh, all I, all I use is my laptop and my MIDI keyboard, and I run everything through, through software. So when I'm actually making a beat, I start with uh, the melody first. I always start with the melody, you know what I'm saying? I, I, get a, I get a chord progression going, or you know what I'm saying? Maybe uh, uh, some bells or whatever, you know what I'm saying? After I get about two, three layers of music going, that's when I'll go in and add a kick, add a snare, add a hi-hat. So, I never start with my drums, and it's ironic because, you know what I'm saying, I'm a drummer, but I never, I never start with my drums because I feel like drums are just, I don't know, I feel like I can go anywhere with the drums. So before I go anywhere, let me get this music down right, let me get the, let me get the piano right, or whatever I'm using. And uh, man, it's all about layering with me, man. I just, I, I layer and I mix it good, make sure it sound right, man. It'll take me about two to three hours to actually get it the way I want it, but you know, that's how I do it, man. Well, generally speaking, I love the, the climate of, of music right now. Not just hip hop, just popular music in general. I, I love where it's at, man. Um, I feel like there's a lot of a lot of producers going back and doing their research, which is making the music that come out now sound more original. You know what I'm saying? Um, what I don't like is there there is a lot of a lot of bandwagon material out there, you know what I'm saying? People listen to the radio and say, oh, I gotta make a song just like this. You know what I'm saying? Which I feel is not the case. As a producer, you know, man, it's, it's, it's pretty hard right now because everybody, everybody in their mama is, is <laughs> downloading some software so they can put drum patterns together and put two, three notes together and trying to send it to everybody, you know what I'm saying? But as far as my own personal encounters, the way I went, out, the way I went about it was making sure that my music was different than the next man. So that way, whenever it do get into the hands of so and so, they'll be like, "Well, man, this sounds completely different than the other 300 beats I just listened to." As far as my desires, man, really, I just want to reach the highest peak that I can. You know what I'm saying? Well, whatever that is. But I, I do have a lot of dreams, like. I see, I see my career resembling the likes of a, a Willie Hutch or a Isaac Hayes or a Quincy Jones. You know, I want to, I want to, I want to grow with music. I want, as I get older, I want to, you know, what I'm saying, have my 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 musicianship grow as well. You know, what I'm saying, and uh, I want to get into film scoring. That's something that I've, I've been thinking about for the past couple of years. Uh, I also want to uh, get heavy into the piano. Like I said, I've, I've learned how to put chords together and stuff, but I actually want to learn how to read and, you know what I'm saying, uh, theory, stuff like that. Uh, and who knows, man, even when I'm 
super old, man. Maybe I'll be like a conductor for like a, a, a symphony or something. You know what I'm saying? Just really, man, I just see my whole life being, uh, you know what I'm saying, having, having something to do with music. The opportunities in music will never go away simply for the fact that I have a God-given talent. As um, far as right now, man, I feel, like, I feel like I'm in a weird space musically, man, because I'm influenced by so much um, that it's kind of hard for me to actually try to categorize my own music. I, I kind of just try to take all of that and actually do my own thing, you know what I'm saying? Like, just take my influences and, you know, make it my own. Like I said, man, I just, I, I understand that, that music is, you know what I'm saying, the world, and I want to be a part of that. I would tell any young person trying to get into game to never give up, ever. Because if you give up, you'll never know where you could have been, you know what I'm saying? Not only that, be different. Don't, don't conform to what the media tells you is hot, you know what I'm saying? Do, do what's in your mind, you know what I'm saying? And like I said, just keep going, because you know, you, you may have, uh, I was on Twitter the other day, and this record executive from Universal, he had a tweet where he was like, uh, you might already have that beat on your hard drive that'll change your life. We'll never know if you give up, you know what I'm saying? And I, you know, just stuff like that, I take it as mission statements, because you know, a lot of people out here do, do give up on their dreams because stuff don't happen for them in the first, first two, three years, you know what I'm saying? It might take you 10 years, you know what I'm saying? You never know, but you know what I'm saying? You gotta have a work ethic. You gotta have a work ethic and you have to be different. I've actually been in about three or four different producer showcases, basically getting my music out there to veterans in the game and you know what I'm saying? Getting feedback, you know, nothing lucrative never happened from those situations but at the same time I did gain experience and I did get my name out there to people that have actually been there and done that. I've had a couple guys actually uh, rap on some records of mine. Uh, there's a guy by the name of uh, Street Wiz from uh, New Orleans that's signed to Currency's label uh, Jet Life Recordings. Man, my favorite composed piece of music. I'll probably have to say a Garden of Peace by Lonnie Liston Smith. Uh, he's, he's a jazz slash soul pianist. Uh, he's been sampled many, 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 many times. Uh, one, one of the most famous samples is Jay-Z's Dead Presidents, which sampled the actual composed music I'm talking about. A Garden of Peace is nothing but like a three, four minute song of just chord progressions. And man, it's just, it's just amazing. I love it. My favorite composed piece of music. <sighs> you know what? I'm gonna have to go with uh, I'm gonna have to go with Cool in the Gang, Summer Madness. A lot of people don't know about the title in the in in the artist, but if you've ever seen the beginning of Baby Boy, you know exactly what I'm talking about. So it's, a lot of, it's a, I believe it's a rose piano that's being used and some light drums and you know what I'm saying a crazy wine synthesizer man and just the dynamics of it is just incredible man man i'm a big kid man i'm 20 years old but i pretty much still do the same stuff i was doing when i was seven eight years old man i watch cartoons man night and day when i wake up my tv is on cartoon network and most importantly man i love uh growing up in the country man i, I was just taught to always value family so to me there's nothing like being back at home chilling with my uncles man chilling with my cousins you know being around my mom my grandma my sister man cartoons man <laughs> i love cartoons man i'm a big kid man uh came of course like any other kid i came up watching cartoons but that phase never left me you know what i'm saying but you know it's not it's not that i watch cartoons just for watching cartoons I, as i got older i started understanding the production, you know what I'm saying? I started understanding animation, even even the storylines, you know what I'm saying? Stuff like that just amazed me because at the end of the day, that's art, you know what I'm saying? And, and, and I'm definitely inspired by all types of art. Stuff one of my favorite one of my favorite cartoons of all time, man, is Family Guy. 
And that may, like, once again, that may sound a little cliche because everybody watch Family Guy, but people don't watch Family Guy the way I watch Family Guy. First of all, as <laughs> soon as they come on, man, that music is so intriguing. A lot of people don't even know what genre of music that is. Family Guy is big band. The whole entire score of, of the cartoon is big band. From the theme music to the transitions, you know what I'm saying, everything has some type of big band element or some type of jazz element in general. Um, or even when some, 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 some crazy stuff is about to happen, the music is letting you know that, you know what I'm saying? You hear some crazy dark chords in the piano or the strings, or you hear some crazy stuff going on in, in the percussion, you know what I'm saying? And, and I pay attention to all of that. Even when I'm watching these cartoons with people, I put them on it, like, man, are you listening to this music right now? What, what is this music telling you? And they'll be like, oh, damn, man, you're right. Like, th this music is, you know what I'm saying? It, it is letting you know that some crazy stuff is about to happen, so. Tavares Jordan uh, from Johnsonville, North Carolina, small town in uh, Hardy County. Uh, born and raised there. Um, came out here in 2010. About to get out of here in December. Uh, and I'm a musician, man. <laughs>